Welcome to another installment of The Basics, and this is going to be the first in a series of five episodes that focuses on each of the colors in Magic the Gathering. So I'm going to take you through each color and what to expect and what they're like. So let's get started. The first color I'm going to talk about is blue, and as you might guess, blue is the color of water and air in this game. You'll see a lot of cards that deal with creatures that have flying. You'll see a lot of amphibious cards, like the King Crab. This is one of the, the better creatures you can put in your blue deck. It's a 4-5 creature. It costs 6 to get out, but it's an awesome card to have in your deck. Blue is very interesting, because if you're playing as blue, you're probably going to load your deck with a lot of flying creatures to counter what your opponent might have, and that comes in handy because they have, your creatures have flying, they can cut right over everything and attack your opponent's creatures very easily unless he has a way to block them. But it doesn't always work out. You'll also see cards like Wall of Air, which is 1-5. Now even though it can't attack, this is a flying wall. So this is where blue comes into its own in that respect, is that it has many things under the flying banner that help you in that respect. You also have cool cards like Memory Lapse, Psychic Venom, and Wind Drake, and there are a lot of drakes in blue. And you have cards like High Tide and Zurin Spellcaster, which deals one damage to target creature or player. And High Tide, until end of turn, all islands produce an additional land when tapped for mana. That's pretty damn cool. And of course, the mana in blue is all islands pretty much. You won't really find much else but islands. If you're starting into magic or if you want to make an interesting but easy deck to build right off the bat and play with your friends, blue is the way to go. And you can quickly master flying creatures and amphibious creatures and I actually use both types in one deck because it comes in quite handy. There's not many downfalls to building a blue deck, with the exception being, like some of the other colors, some of the best cards have a high cost to get them out when you play. So you have to take that into consideration when you're building a deck. And this takes you back to what I said episodes back about the 30% mana rule when building a deck. Especially as the case with blue, you need lots of islands in your deck to help you along. That's all for this episode. I'll see you next time for the next color up.